happen. He drives in the corner, got loose, had to chase it up the racetrack. He's really loose. Back in, the only, only reason he didn't spin out is because the wall stopped him. But it all started well, getting in the There have been a few drivers that have figured out just how tough they are to drive with Darlington Stripes. That was a big one for the three of Austin Dillon. Chase yeah. Elliott, he found the wall as well. Trevor Bain should have wiped out if it wouldn't have been for the wall. This, this is, that's just a little kiss. Daniel Suarez back in the garage. Guys, Steps what out. Steps out right there. He catches it with the right rear. You see it, and then slams the right front into it. That's a pretty hard hit right there. That, that may be the hardest hit we've seen uh, in, in any of these practices. You see that right there? Boom. It, the car totally changes direction from the racetrack, and there's enough bank uh, to keep him out of the wall. Take a look. Up the track he goes and into the wall for Kyle Busch. Turn two. Yeah, that, that turn three, actually. The, all that trouble started getting in the corner. He got free and uh, had to chase it up the racetrack. And uh, you can see big damage. Mike. Just for a little bit, getting into turn three, it's going to be a problem. And around goes the 25 of Chase Elliott. Also with him, the 35. So as we just saw Cole Wicks involved in a little bit of a scuffle. Chase Elliott also going around. And the caution comes out for the first time. And that's some of the penalty that you strike. The 25 had to go to the back because of a rear gear. Puts him at the back of the pack after a good qualifying effort. This is the issue with traffic at Darlington. It's so narrow. It's so easy to get caught up into an accident. You see the 34 also has damage. So they're coming off turn four. The 34 had trouble, had to get out of the throttle, and everybody behind him just didn't get slowed up enough. That's a typical Darlington wreck. That's probably not the last time we're going to see it. It's just so hard to see in front of you here because you're turning at such an angle, and this, the, the closing rate is so high. When somebody has to lift off the throttle, you're going so fast in that part of the racetrack, these guys just couldn't get slowed up. 25 of Chase Elliott got caught up in it. Cole Witt into the inside wall here. Safer barriers on both the inside and outside walls here at Darlington. The modern technology of the safer barriers, even though the track's 65 years old. So he got, got in the outside wall, then he got into the 35 and chasing the 25 car. He just could not get slowed up. There's nothing he could do. Now, Rick, we're talking about, you know, throwback Darlington. One thing about this weekend that's been a throwback is this tire that Goodyear has brought has been soft, grippy tire, and this track has aged since the repaint. Sideways was the 20 of Matt Kenseth. Into the wall he goes, but it keeps him straightened out. He's got damage. That, that, could, that could cause him a problem. I was watching him. He was flying. He's driven up to third. I believe he started, he started back at Excellent turn two. He just gets a little high and out of the groove. The thing gets really loose, catches the safety barrier. We're in the same mark we saw where they hit before. Now you're on board here with Kevin Harvick. You see the 20 come by hard in the gas. And just has a big wiggle. You hear Kevin Harvick gets out of the gas. He's not sure where the 20 is going to go. This is not, when we talk about a Darlington stripe, we talk about a little rub up and down the right the spin side. spin of Ryan Newman. And that was in the middle of turns three and four, completely sideways. And then he goes all the way down to the apron. And around he goes. The caution came out. DJ, a lot of action going on on the track. And uh, here we're going to see A.J. Allmendinger. Oh, looks like a little, oh, well, goodness. Ooh, little help for my friend. Yeah. <laughs> We just saw uh, in the 51's on pit road right now, Justin Allgaier, but you can see he just got out of shape, and a driver sometimes like A.J. Allmendinger right there, nowhere see, to go. See, at the very outset of the race. Oh, we've got number 46 looping it down into the inside, and uh, the driver, Michael Annette. Michael Annette in clear. trouble. The Iowa kid, 33rd, and having difficulties guys, trying to, to make right this on. track work for him. That's the problem here. You can't depend on the racetrack. You know, you talk about transitions helping the drivers. Well, both of you know this track is no help at all. The track is your enemy as much as the other 42 other competitors. You can see there is certainly gonna, not going to be context, just getting loose. You know, that's just what happens. And probably the car, you're trying, you're trying to power up as much as you can right there and uh, just steps out. Yeah, it's, low. it's what the blow down force package is kind of designed to do. You know, you don't have that pushing down and helping you with that stability that you really want. 44 laps of green, and you saw Menard in the 27 at the right saint. 
Yeah, not exactly the caution flag at this time that Carl Edwards and Casey Kane were looking for as they made green flag pit stops. Uh, kind of, they were hoping that they would cycle through a green flag run before a caution may happen. So the pits are open. Oh, everybody will come down. Yep. Pardon? Everybody will be coming down this yep. time. Well, here's Michael Lynette limping onto pit road. Flat spotted a little, I would say. Holiday, Labor Day. This is their track. Oh, the number 33 is up on the fence. Number 33, that is that Mike Bissell. What? Look at that. Now, there's a stripe for you, friends. That's Darlington. Hello. Back in 37th position. How different the two ends are. Let's see what happens, Mike Bliss, here. Gets down in the corner. Looks like, gosh, that's certainly looking like a tire went down there or something. Because yeah, yeah. it wouldn't turn. I, you, you see that happen a lot. The car just take off. But uh, it certainly looked like that he just wasn't able to, to get it turned. I don't know if he had a, a tire that had been going down, and, and then that contributed to his problem. From about 10th on back, they come to get tires. We've had another crash. Already the 26th to 33. Bliss again involved in an incident. J.J. Yaley this time also caught up into the wall. We see a lot of right side damage for J.J. Yaley. Sixth caution of the night coming out. Jump sideways the wrong direction halfway down the back straightaway. Michael Lynette, a lot of damage to the left side. Take a look at what happened. Yeah, we talk about how narrow Darlington is. Well, this is what happens when people have issues. It collects other people because there's just nowhere to go, especially at the speeds they're running around this 1.3-mile oval. The groove, while the track might seem wide with that big, large apron, that running groove is very narrow. Kozlowski once again leading laps, and around goes the 48. Jimmy Johnson coming in front of the grandstands. Gets sideways. The seventh caution of the night comes out. And this is the product, Rick. The 48. Good job. The 48 was one of the cars that pitted on the caution. A caution to go. Lap around, around lap 121. So 48 on the bottom. Three of 22 on the bottom of the 48. 48 comes down on the 22. Basically spun himself out. We'll ride along with Denny Hamlin. See the view that he had of this spin. Yeah, you see Joe Logano just looking for real estate. He has those fresh tires. Just the 88, just the 88 one behind him. Jimmy turns down across really the nose of the 22. Probably had no idea the 22. While he knew he was back there, he probably didn't know exactly where he was at. You know, he's kind of in that blind spot right off the left rear corner. And Jimmy really, to your point, Jeff, comes down on the 22. And that's one thing that we don't think about Darlington running three wide. You know, it's just something you don't, you've never heard of. But now that this bottom groove works so well, you know, the 22 did nothing wrong. Joey Logano was in his position. He never changed lanes. I just don't think Jimmy Johnson realized he was there or even expected that he would be there. But as the world always happens, he deserved a penalty. <laughs> Didn't get it. <laughs> it he was got a really loose car up, and now we've got Trevor Bain who spun out, right? Trevor Bain around. And that brings out the caution for the eighth time. A lot of damage to the left side of the number six. He was real slow down the back straightaway, like he had a tire coming down, was trying to get on pit road and spun. And now he's chosen to continue going around, trying not to get so a lap had down. a flat tire. Well, maybe this is where it came from. The three checks up. The six has to get checked up, and Danica Patrick has kind of nowhere to go. Gets into the left side of the six of Trevor Bain, perhaps cutting one of those left side tires. So some damage also to the right side of the 10 for Danica Patrick. And again, Danica was tailed her line. Trevor Bain, I just don't I think he turned left trying to avoid the three car. And then after that contact, the left side tires go down on the Trevor Bain car. Like you said, Jeff, trying to get to pit road and with a flat left rear tire. This track is slick. Take air out of one of the tires, it's impossible. And around he goes. Take to the grill this two car twice tonight. Problems for Danica Patrick. Smoking out of the back of the 10 for Danica Patrick. Four tires, six to damage. She's down on the apron. Yeah, and it's still under green. She's staying off the race. Well, now she's coming up closer to the racing groove, throwing some tire rubber off. NASCAR will be looking at that. Yeah, a lot of debris. For a caution. A lot of debris coming off the car, and I'm sure she wants she wants to get a caution so that she doesn't lose too many laps here. But NASCAR telling her to get down 
off of the racing surface and onto the apron as she comes onto pit road. We stay on the bottom of the racetrack and turns three and four, goes to accelerate. Car just gets away from her. She has to chase it up the racetrack and ends up with heavy contact. Yeah, that's a backup car. Remember, Jeff, she also had an accident in qualifying, so that's the second car of the weekend for Danica. This is a tough place, Rick. They don't, this, the lady in black doesn't care if you're running first or running 15th. And this is how easily it can happen. You see, she's just trying to get the power down, just trying to accelerate off the corner. One wiggle, but Darlington, you're already so close to the wall. There's no room to save it. A big correction. She has no choice but to turn the wheel to the right, Jeff. The car goes right up the track into the wall. Up against the outside wall, and around goes the 17. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. out of turn number four gets into the inside wall. Caution coming out again. That will be the end of the night for Stenhouse Jr. It's really disappointing to see the throwback paint scheme in honor of David Pearson. And they were running well. They had a good weekend. They qualified you see right well. here. And just inside Clint Boyer, it's just so hard. Has a lot of wheel in it, Jeff. While he's trying to get the power down, it just spins around on him. Yeah, that's a bad situation to be underneath another car. Digging really hard. You have all the air being taken off the rear spoiler. On top of that, there was a little bit of contact between the two cars, but that doesn't help anything either. So just two cars racing hard on a restart. That's just a racing accident. I mean, we have we have accidents in racing because people are trying to pass each other and go, and a lot of times everybody wants to point the finger and say, he did this, he did that. Sometimes wrecks just happen when you have good close racing. And we've talked earlier about the uh, limit on tires. With only four laps on the tires right there, I expect all the leaders to stay out. While they would probably love to have tires, I don't think you can afford to put them on with this many laps still to go. And just after that 17 got into the wall, the 98 and the 7 got into each other. And that was a big hit. Those guys got together really hard. T.J. Bell in the 98 and the 7 driven by Alex Bowman. So a lot of damage to both cars. Mike. This race looks like to me at the kind of races. Oh, we got to spin. Around goes. Yeah, you're rolling straight. You're rolling it straight. The 16 Get of Greg middle, Biffle. Coming up. We saw the right. 18 of Kyle Busch behind him. And the caution comes out for the 11th time tonight. Did we get anything? Looks like all the tires are up here. Why don't Already sideways and way down the track was Kyle Busch. I wonder if we talked about it all night long, how tight things are getting into turn one. And they were sideways. Like that's what happened. Yep. At 208, and Chase Elliott into the wall hard. The successor to Jeff Gordon. Chase Elliott looks like his night might be done. His father, Bill Elliott, had such success at this racetrack. Yeah, good. Blue right front there. A lot of damage on the right front of that car. Yeah, you see the 25 is already up into the wall. The left front tire is turning to the right. Even as a young driver, he understands he needs to stay up in the wall. He doesn't want to come back across traffic. And Red, that, that's the disappointing part of this is why is Chase Elliott in this 25 car here at Darlington? Because he's trying to get experience. He's right. taking over the 24 next year for Jeff Ford. But he said, I'm telling you guys, on a scale of 1 to 10 with damage, I hit a 5. Sideways goes Bain. Watch the pit wall. Yellow down, yellow down. Spawn for Ford here. Kelly. And just moments ago, we heard Trevor Bain come over the radio. They said they thought they had a right rear tire rub. It was starting to smoke. They think some of that sheet metal had been pushed in from damage earlier in the race. And now we see Trevor Bain uh, going around and headed to pit road. Six. Bottom of the racetrack. Comes up the racetrack. The five of Casey Kane had some momentum coming. Just pulled up in front of him. Casey ran in the back of him. A lot of right rear damage to the six. Greg Biffle almost sliding up. Could have been two Roush Fenway cars involved in that one. And the right rear quarter panel was shoved into the right rear tire. Now the right rear tire goes down. And Trevor spins. It looked as though he was trying to get back around and potentially get onto pit road. But when the caution comes out, they close pit road. So he had to make his way all the way around the racetrack. Five. 
David Reagan into the inside wall on the front stretch. And that brings the caution out for the 14th time. Again, cars were just on pit road on lap 247. Some were, others weren't. They stayed out. Joey Logano was 2.30. Danica Patrick came back out onto the track after being in the garage. David was running 14th. He was having a good night. We'd seen him run well, had a good qualifying effort, ran well in practice. He's got a loose leap in the corner, looks like. Maybe trying to make a move on Jimmy Johnson. And again, a little bit like Danica, leaving the corner right there, trying to lay the throttle down. Back end just came around on him. We got a big wreck on the front stretch, guys. 55 once again, David Reagan. And he brings out the 15th caution. We are closing in on that record of 17 cautions. Brought up the 27 and Paul Menard, one of those drivers on the bubble. Doesn't have a win, trying to get points. David Reagan, damage on the right side. Menard was behind him, and into the wall he put him. Those are the type of accidents you see later in the race. That's just frustration. There, there's really no, no good reason for that. You know, Paul Menard looks like he's looking underneath him. The 55 comes down to the bottom of the racetrack. The 27. I know he has momentum, Jeff, but he has pedals in the race car. You know, he chooses to, to get into the back of the 55, maybe not meaning to spin him out, but at least push him, try to carry some momentum down the front stretch. It was too much. The 55 couldn't handle it. Is this a big break for the 18 of Kyle Busch? Well, he's definitely lost his track position, but he did stay on the lead lap. Now he's back on sequence with the leaders, but it doesn't look like all the leaders are going to pit. And how about the flames from underneath? The 55 and David, top two separated by just under two car lengths, and around goes the 41 of Kurt Busch trying to save it. The field slowing behind him. He slides, and the caution comes out again. We tie the record. Running third, and the 78 got in the back of him. 78 just got in there a little bit too deep. The 41 lifted a little bit early. You could see the brake rotors glowing on the 78. He was on the brakes trying to avoid him, but he just misjudged how the 41 was going to slow down. Kyle Larson's vantage point. He also had to check up hard onto the brakes to avoid running into the back of Martin Truex Jr. Carl Edwards in the Aris 19, taking the low line to try to clear everyone, but a smoke screen put out by that 41 of Kurt Busch. Dave? And Martin Truex talking to his crew over the radio said, I had no idea he was going to slow down that fast. I just ran him over. The new race pack, and we got a spin in turn one and two. Oh, my goodness. Jeff Burton in the 23 is going to bring the caution out for a new caution. record here in the Southern 500. He was underneath the 48, kind of in the middle of the racetrack, and it just gets loose. We've seen that a bunch today, being loose underneath another car. We've talked about these drivers being in these race cars for over four hours. Well, guess what? The pit crews have been standing there all day long. They've had a lot of pit stops, more than we most, more than we normally see. They've got to be tired. It's late in the night, a lot of pit stops.